Hi, this is John Hope Bryant, founder, chairman, and chief executive officer of Operation Hope here in the United States of America, talking to the Emirates Foundation and uh, their gathered uh, uh, extended family of leaders, of young people, of role models, of mentors, of partners, and of friends uh, there in the UAE. Uh, I am uh, referencing my country and yours, but in reality, we're global citizens. We're all one. And nobody exemplifies that better uh, than your CEO, uh, Claire Woodcraft. Uh, she is a visionary. Uh, she is passionate. Uh, she is excited. She is smart. <laughs> uh, and she is well-connected. And to see somebody with this uh, much uh, potential and influence, using that potential and influence to empower young people uh, to make the world a better place is truly inspiring. Uh, and has my absolute respect. I'm, I'm really talking to you today about a new movement. Uh, I'm talking to you today about a friendship. I'm talking to you about a bond. I'm talking to you about a relationship. Why are those things uh, in the same uh, breath? Because you don't do business with companies or countries uh, or institutions. You do business with people. And you've got to trust who you're doing business with. You've got to feel comfortable uh, with those individuals. You've got to build a rapport and a relationship so that there is genuine care and concern for each other. Uh, and that's what we have with Claire. Uh, my team and hers, me and her. Uh, a real commitment to something larger and more important than ourselves. I believe financial literacy, the issue that you guys are rallying around, that we have worked in the curriculum for, for all young people 15 to 25 years of age there uh, in the UAE, um, that this new financial literacy piece is the new civil rights issue uh, for a generation around the world. If you don't understand the language of money, financial literacy, and you don't have, as an example, a bank account, at some point you're an economic slave. Or to quote my hero, Ambassador Andrew Young, who was the right arm to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in the civil rights movement, to live in a system of free enterprise and not to understand the rules of free enterprise must be the very definition of slavery. Why am I talking about civil rights issues uh, when all anybody wants to do really is to go shopping? <laughs> uh, because this is the way the world works uh, and this is the issue that uh, the world is dealing with right now and we can't just continue to focus on the pleasure principles of life. We've got to focus on the work of life because rainbows only follow storms. You cannot have a rainbow without a storm first. And you are there in the UAE experiencing, for the most part, an enormous uplift, an enormous uh, opportunity, uh, and uh, the best of everything. <clears throat> but the rest of the world uh, is not in the same place. And I hate to tell you this, but you may not be in the, the, the best of places uh, forever yourselves. That's just the way the world works. Uh, you've got to build an economy. You've got to build real work ethic. You've got to build real small businesses. You've got to, you cannot uh, rely uh, on debt um, or spending or, or, or shopping malls to fulfill you. Um, uh, this is not uh, uh, a reality that is sustainable. Uh, you've got a great curriculum there, but it's called Spend Wisely. It's not called Invest Wisely or Build Wisely. It's called Spend Wisely, and that's very interesting uh, because that is, of course, um, a culture that has been embedded um, uh, is to spend, is to take a, a loan when you have a need. Uh, one, that's not sustainable there, and you know it. Really, you know it. And the young people are smart enough, they know it. Uh, it just feels good. So we've got we to gotta adjust that, uh, that uh, Geiger counter a little bit, adjust uh, uh, that uh, uh, measurement tool so that it, it, it properly balances between spending and investing. But when you get beyond that, you look at the broader world and you look at our responsibility to the broader world, your responsibility as leaders there in the Middle East. And I see a country, uh, a region, uh, the UAE, who has an opportunity to be a role model for the world. Um, look at what's going on in Greece. What's their problem? They're broke. Look at what's going on in Europe. What's the problem? They're broke. Look at what's going on in Africa. Uh, look at what's going on in Asia. Uh, I mean, even China is dealing with, uh, while they have prosperity, they're dealing with all these poor people who want a shot at the economic dream. Uh, you look at what's going on with uh, most of the Middle East. Uh, the, the issue in the, around the world is poverty. And you've got a key. You, you've got this aspirational dream that everybody wants to participate in. 
and you should want to share it with them. But before you do, you've got to understand the tools of how to sustain it yourself. So teaching everybody the financial literacy, the language of money, the first civil rights issue, or what I call civil rights, from civil rights to civil rights, giving them the tools to take care of themselves, do for themselves. Then they become small business owners and entrepreneurs. Yes, small business owners and entrepreneurs. Do you know that every big business was once a small one? Do you know that the people who built up your country uh, started with a small dream and grew it into a big reality? Big businesses were not always big businesses. In fact, 70% of the U.S. economy, still the largest economy in the world, uh, 16, 17 trillion dollars. You can take most major economies, put it inside of our economy, and still have room together. This economy is driven. 50% uh, by all uh, of all employees work for businesses with 100 employees or less. 70% of all of all uh, employee employment in the U.S. are businesses with 500 employees or less. And there's less than a thousand companies in this country that employ 10,000 people or more. And government only employs 8%. In some ways, the Middle East has it backwards. Government is a super employer. That's not sustainable, as I said earlier uh, in my remarks. Uh, and small business is anemic. And, uh, and by the way, most uh, job growth comes from small businesses and entrepreneurs year three through year seven. You've got an opportunity there with these young people in a region where 60% of the population will soon be under the age of 25. In Saudi Arabia, it's already under the age of 25. Uh, you've got an opportunity to take all this young energy and to turn it into something positive and prosperous to focus on we and not just about me. So let me ask a question to some of the young people watching uh, this video. Do you like to go shopping? Of course you do. Do you like nice things? Of course you do. That, I mean, so do I. Uh, but but do you, do you want to change the world? Sure you do. Do you want to have a legacy that lives long, longer, larger, and more important, that's, that looms more important than yourself? Sure you do. Do you want to know the world? Do you want the world to know that you were here? Sure you do. Everybody does. That comes from not getting, but giving. It comes from living for something larger and more important than yourself. It comes from having a vision uh, that towers above your own limitations, your needs, and your wants. It comes from learning how to build something. And financial literacy is at a fundamental building block that allows you to put other things on it. So whether you want to become a homeowner or an entrepreneur or a small business owner, whether you want to go work for somebody else and become what I call an entrepreneur, but creative and innovative inside of somebody else's space, like the Emirates Foundation, to help them build something, it, it all rests in the 21st century on understanding the language of money because we live in an economic age. So there was a time where freedom meant uh, the right to vote or you know, uh, other, uh, other ways to determine your individual freedom. But today, freedom really is self-determination. The ability to get up and to know you can take care of yourself and your responsibilities, you can pay your debts, uh, pay off your debts. More importantly, you can build up something. You have something to pass on to, 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 uh, uh, to your children and your children's children other than obligations. <laughs> so, so this is a, a time for you to reimagine uh, your future. Because I think that the UAE could become a role model for the world. I think that there are several countries in the Middle East that could become a role model uh, to the world. But you can't do that uh, unless you change your leadership model, unless you empower young people, unless you create a surge in entrepreneurs and small business owners and employment, uh, young people who want to build something, grow something, become the next innovators and um, and um, um, extenders of uh, the UAE vision for a new generation, and not just folks who take, 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 use, 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 consume, consume, consume. Uh, I am so excited about what's going on in this region of the world. I'm so excited about our partnership with the Emirates Foundation. I'm so excited about the leadership I see coming out of the region that really wants to reset uh, their perception in the world and reset uh, the region as a nation of leaders, people filled with hope and opportunity, uh, those who want to give and not just get, uh, and those who want to, uh, uh, to really be focused on an empowerment agenda uh, that relies on being able to do for oneself. Everybody has a role in this vision. Women and girls have a role in this vision. Young boys have a role in this vision. The rich, the poor, the middle class have a role in this vision. Government community and the private sector have a role in this vision. All of you have a place and a, and, a, and, a, and a way that you can contribute to a reimagined 
MENA region. And I'll give you a challenge. The MENA region, Middle East and North Africa, needs 100 million jobs uh, by 2020. Uh, that won't come from big business and it won't come from government. It will only come from you. So let's go be the change we want to see in the world. Let's go change the world starting with right now. I'm honored to be your partner. Let's go.